Well, good morning, everyone. Good to be with you on this Thursday morning. Hope and pray that you've been having a good week and uh, that you're looking forward to another good day today. Whatever it is that you may be planning on doing today, pray that you'll be blessed and uh, that God be with you in whatever you do. Looking forward to devotions this morning. So uh, let's get into it, shall we? Job chapter 6. Carol, good morning. Good to see you this morning. Job chapter 6. This is where we are. Tracy, good morning. Uh, you know, there is something that happens um, in Spain every year. It happens in a little town called uh, Pamplonia. And it's where they have what they call the running of the bulls. And the running of the bulls is... Uh, they do this thing before they have the big bullfights there in Spain and uh, all of that, and uh, blood sports terrible. Uh, anyway, this running of the bulls, they let all these bulls go, and all these crazy people from around the world, you, I mean, you've probably seen it, they run out in front of these bulls trying to run faster from them, trying to escape their horns and, and all that. Well, I was doing a little bit of research about that. There have been so many people that have been uh, badly hurt uh, and some even killed through this whole exercise of what they call running of the bulls. Now you've got to think about it. You've got a, you've got a uh, pack. Good morning. You've got a a, a one ton animal, and uh, you know with horns on it. And I've seen them uh, it, it destroy cars and lift them up with their horns. And I've uh, you know people get gored and uh, trampled on and all that sort of thing. And 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 the reason for that is that when you think about that, they let these bulls go. There's noise going on everywhere. People are shouting and carrying on. Car horns are blaring and fireworks are going off. And, you know, these, these bulls are, 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 are scared. They're, defense, they're defensive. They're agitated. They lash out. Uh, they try to hurt. And who wants to get in the way of a raging bull? I don't know about you, but I don't want to get in the way of a raging bull. I've done a little bit of work on outback cattle properties when my dad was a manager, and when you've got cattle in the yards, I'll tell you what, you've got to watch out, watch out for those bulls, you know what I mean? Or you watch a rodeo, bull riding, and you know the rider comes off, and in come the, uh, the clowns to try and distract the bull, and you see those guys get hurled through the air, and man, that animal is raging. Well, we get to uh, chapter 6 and 7 here in the, in the book of Job. And Job is having his first rebuttal against his friends. And of course, the first one was Eliphaz. And we looked a little bit yesterday about what Eliphaz was saying and how that sometimes these friends of Job, uh, you know, have some good things to say. And sometimes they have not so good things to say. And this is his first rebuttal. And, and I'll be quite honest with you, Job unleashes the raging bull, if you please. And uh, it's very similar to, you know, what I was describing, because here, here you've got Job who, you know, he's, he's, he's defensive. Uh, he's, he's gone on the, the attack. He's hurting. He's in pain. And, uh, you know, he's been sit, he's ag probably agitated. There's no doubt he's agitated. Uh, he's, he's, he's not understanding you know, and I'm not saying this as a, as a negative towards him. He's not understanding what's, what's going on in his life. And so therefore he's bang, he's, he, he, lets, he lets loose. And we can learn some things from this in our own life because all of us have the opportunity or the potential to let the raging bull loose. <laughs> all of us have got a raging bull inside of us. You know what I mean? Like, and it doesn't take much to unleash the beast and uh, let him out and just get defensive and go on the attack. And, you know, someone once said that hurting people hurt people and, and uh, you know, and, and the list goes on. But as I was reading through chapters six and seven yesterday, there's just a couple of things that came out that, that we need to be mindful about when we're going through situations in our own life that we don't fully understand. Um, you know, you've gone through your checklist, you think, hang on a second, you know, like Job, and we've said this time and time as we've sort of gone through this book, he was not in sin, he was walking with God, he was perfect, he was upright, he feared God and eschewed evil. So when you go through your checklist and you think, well, hang on a second, I'm, I'm, I'm living as, and everyone always goes on and says, well, I probably could be doing more, you know, I could be doing more Bible reading and I could be doing more praying and all that. And they try and like, oh, well, yeah, bring it back. God's not happy with me. This is why this thing's happening to me. Well, that's not the case with Job. So go through your checklist and, and be honest. It's like, you know, you, most of the folks that I know that are on live and watch later on, you know, you're trying to live your life for the Lord and you're in prayer and 
reading your Bible, faithful to the Lord, faithful to church, generous, and, and all these sorts of things that are going on. Everything that the Lord expects of us, you do it. So when, when you're going through something, do your checklist, Brother John, good morning. And, and check out, so hang on a sec, you know, as, as, as much as I can, I, I, I believe I'm walking with the Lord. So if you come to that point, hang on, so if I'm experiencing something in my life like a satanic attack, then we know that the Lord's allowed this and and we've got to understand that God is in charge and in control. Remember the theme for this whole book, the key verse is that God is greater than man. And he's not only just greater than man, though the verse says that, we understand through other scriptures, he's greater than his creation, he's even greater than the wicked one, amen? We're glad about that. So, so we learn the very fact that God is greater. God is in charge and God is in control of our lives and what's happening. Something you're going through, obviously, it's what's what we call father filtered. You know, the Lord's allowed it. He's given the okay. He knows that you're able to handle it with his help and all these sorts of things. But we do need to be mindful of some things as we experience something that we may not really fully understand what is happening to me in my life. I'm trying to live the best I can. I'm trying to do what is right. I'm trying to be a good parent. I'm trying to be a good pastor. I'm trying to be a good worker. I'm trying to be a good businessman, businesswoman. The list goes on, right? So let's learn some things this morning, just briefly, uh, about Job unleashing the raging bull, all right? And again, I, I, I want to defend Job. I, I try to defend him because it's like, you know, he's going through something that he doesn't understand. And, you know, he's, he's been sitting and listening. He listens to these guys because, as I said, the first rebuttal. And, uh, you know, he's got more to come. All right. And so, therefore, it's like, and by the way, you know, when you get people starting to say, well, you know, what you're going through is... Uh, uh, obviously, uh, you know, man is born in trouble, as, as his mate Eliphaz says, and, you know, uh, you know, you've got to expect these, you're not right, how can you say you're righteous and all this sort of stuff, and the more you hear negative stuff from people, actually, the more you embrace that, the more you take that on, even if it's subconsciously, you take that on, Jody, good morning, and, uh, you know, so you've got to be very careful about that, but I want you to notice the first thing that we got to be aware of, all right, beware the raging bull, and Job shuts down and starts to look inwardly. Now have a look at chapter 6. Look at verse number 11. He says, What is my strength that I should hope? And what is my end that I should prolong my life? Is my strength the strength of stones? Is my flesh of brass? Now listen to this very, very carefully. Is not my help in me? Is not my help in me? And is the wisdom driven quite from me? So in other words, say, I, I'm looking inwardly. Is not my help in me? Has wisdom gone from me? So he starts now looking inwardly and what he's experiencing now, he's looking inwardly to find help from self. We've got to be very careful that when we're going through things that we don't fully understand, we've got to watch out for the self-help gurus, the self-help, it's within me, I can do this, you know what I mean? Um, the guys like the Tony Robinsons of this world and others like him, the life coaching gurus uh, that have their mantras, which is all about looking inward. As a matter of fact, his mantra, Tony Robbins and others like him, start out by getting people to say this, all I need is within me now. All I need is within me now. And, they, and people chant that. That's their mantra. They, they, they rev themselves up. They, they get into this frenzy of I can do this my I can I'm look and they're looking inwardly self-help it's a big thing not just in the world today brethren but it's a big thing in Christendom because there's a lot of popular preachers out there today that have the same kind of mantra they just dress it up in Christian vocabulary for example you've got the Joel Osteens and the Kenneth Copelands and you've got all of those prosperity guys that have the power of a positive confession and if you say it and it'll come to pass and speak it into existence and they get you to say don't speak anything negative you, you speak the positive you speak the positive well they get that where do they get that from they get that from these gurus who go around with all these humanistic ideas and that, that's what it is the moment Job starts looking inwardly and starts sourcing help from self that is down the path of a humanistic approach to your life. Christianity, excuse me a second, my chair's slipping down. 
Christianity has got nothing to do with humanism. Humanism should not enter into it. And it's creep and it's been creeping in for a very, very long time. All right. Hold your place here in Job. Let's go to a very familiar verse for all of us. And uh, it goes to Philippians. Paul says in Philippians chapter three, and I know you know this verse, and we could we could quote quote it off by heart and but we'll look at it anyway. Uh, Philippians chapter three. Uh, where, no, sorry, Philippians 4. What am I saying? Philippians 3. Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things. Now, here is the key through Christ. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Now, you know, Job says, is not my help within me? Well, if he was saying through the Spirit, yeah. But he, we know that he didn't have the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit in his life. Now he's looking at what's going on. He said, I can fix this. I've got to do something about this. I've got to, I've got to rectify this. I've, I've got to, I've, you know, I, I, my life is just crashed. Nobody's helping me. My friend here, Eliphaz, my others are not helping me. It feels like, and we know this as we read later on, it feels that, that God's even abandoned him. And the moment that you get into a mindset where you feel that God has abandoned you, you start looking inward and you start seeking help from self. Brother Arnold, good morning. So you and I can do all things, but it's through Jesus Christ. When you look inwardly, you look inward to the Spirit of God to help you, not self. All right, not self. Your wisdom and my wisdom is nothing compared. The wisdom of this world is nothing compared to the foolishness of God. The foolishness of God is greater than the wisdom of this world. And we don't want to start relying on our own wisdom, our own our own ideas, our own beliefs, everything. You know, we don't want to start looking inward. So you've got all of these uh, modern day pop culture preachers out there that they've got all that Joel Osteen starts off with. This is my Bible. I am what it says. I And he starts off getting all these people are chanting the whole this mantra. Oh, and they start razzing themselves up. Where did they get that from? You know what I mean? The power of a positive confession and speak it into existence and all this sort of stuff. You know what I mean? You'll be very, very careful of that because the devil is very subtle and he can and he can weave in humanistic ideas and make it look so good in Christianity. So you've got to beware the raging bull because once you start going on the defensive. Once you start uh, uh, getting agitated and, and you want to lash out and you want to you basically hurt somebody, you know what I mean? Hey, is not my help within me? Job is saying, no, I, there's no help within me apart from God himself as a believer in Jesus Christ. Amen. So you've got this whole, he shuts down and starts to look inwardly. Secondly, if you go to chapter seven, let's go back to Job, Job chapter seven. Uh, he removes all the filters, all the filters. <laughs> you know anyone that doesn't have any filters? You know, they just say whatever pops into their brain. They don't stop and think. Whatever comes in here, bang, they say it. Well, have a look at uh, Job, Job chapter 7. Look at verse number 11. He says, Therefore, I will not refrain my mouth. I will speak in the anguish of my spirit, and I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. All filters have been removed. Now, he's been holding off. Hey, uh, whoa, Brother Fraser, he's from Spain. Going to go join the running of the bulls, Brother Fraser. Speak about that. The raging bull. So now we've got all the filters removed. And now he's, he, he's, he's been waiting. He's been hurting. He's, he, he's, you know, the pain of the boils and the loss of everything in his life. And, he's been, and now he's like, right, the, the filters are off. And he's, um, I'm going to speak in the anguish of my spirit and the bitterness of my soul. And he's just going to say whatever he's going to say. You know, the interesting thing about that, and we looked a little bit about words yesterday. Do you know that wounds are heard through our words? Wounds are heard through our words. You know, when somebody is wounded in their spirit, wounded in their soul, wounded in their life by what they say. And uh, it's not hard to work that out. It's not rocket scientists, but you've got to be very careful that when you're experiencing something in your life that you just don't fully understand what's taking place. Be very careful. Beware the raging bull. Beware that you just remove all filters and you start off. You know what? You, it, because I tell you, it is a struggle. It's a battle to, to, to keep under. 
all right, to, to deal with the soul, you know what I mean? As he says, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to speak in the anguish of my spirit and complain in the bitterness of my soul. Words, words are powerful, right? Whether they're, whether they're uh, helpful or whether they're damaging, they're, they're very powerful. And now Job's removed the filters. As a matter of fact, go with me to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12, look at what Jesus said here about words. This is an interesting passage. We don't have time this morning, obviously, to, to expound, exegete, if you please, this whole passage. But Jesus is dealing with what you say. As a matter of fact, he starts out in verse number 31 where he says, Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And now watch this. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whoso speaketh, right? So we're dealing with a subject and he goes on and you, you'll see it as he brings out what you're saying. So whoso speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in that in which is to come. The blasphemy of the Holy Ghost is, a, is, a, is I guess, a topic that, that is uh, oftentimes misunderstood. What is it? Oh, you know, you, you, you're saying that these miracles are not of God. That's blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. Well, actually, blasphemy against the Holy Ghost is you verbalizing your rejection uh, of Jesus as the spirit convicts. You reject, you reject. You're saying, I'm not interested. I, I don't believe in Jesus. I don't blah, blah. And so your word. So Jesus said, if you speak a word against the Son of Man, that'll be forgiven. But you speak a word against the Spirit of God, it's not going to be forgiven in this life or in that which is to come. Verse number 33 starts out with the word, either make the tree good. What is he talking about? Well, the subject is the spoken word. So words that you say either make the tree good and his fruit good or else make the tree corrupt and the fruit corrupt for the tree is known by his fruit. And we know that, right? But his, his words and uh, words are, uh, wounds sorry, are heard through our words. So now we're talking verse 34. Watch this. O generation of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. There it is. Out of the abundance of the heart, your, your mouth lets me know where your heart's at. If you're in a good place, good place with God and, and, and you're, you're right with God and you're working, walking with God, you can tell by what's coming out of your mouth. Your heart is filled with the things of God, filled with the word of God, and it comes out. This is the release. This is where you know whether someone's right or wrong in a standing with God. You know when believers are carnal or not by what's coming out of their mouth. If they're letting expletives go and all this sort of stuff and, and, and saying things that are not right, you, you know that, that by what they're saying, you know the condition of the heart. You don't need to go digging around. You just listen to what people are saying. And if people are saying those corrupt words and wrong things and what bitterness, you know, comes out, the, the, Job says about the bitterness of his soul, the anguish of his spirit. Well, how do you know when a soul is bitter and a spirit is in anguish by what's coming out here? It's like a pressure cooker. You know what I mean? When you're, when you're cooking in a pressure cooker and you slowly release the pressure and the steam comes out. Job gets to the point now in his life where the steam has been going and bang, out it comes and he starts going for it okay so let's go on for a minute let's have a look at verse number 35 a good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things and an evil man out of the evil treasure of the heart bringeth forth evil things but i say unto you that every idle word that man shall speak they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment for by thy words thou shalt be justified and by thy words thou shalt be condemned that's a that's an amazing passage that jesus is sharing with us right there, but the but Job, the filters were off. You you know you are you. We know the condition of the heart by what the mouth is saying. Okay, so wounds are heard through the words, and Job's filter has been removed. Let's go back to Job, and uh, let's go back to Job chapter seven. Job seven, uh, and let me give you the last thing because now the focus in Job's life shifts. From, uh, I guess, an attack on Eliphaz or a defense towards Eliphaz. And now I'm looking inwardly and, and the filters are off and I'm just going for it. The, the raging bull is out there. The horns are swinging around and woe be the person that gets in the way of a raging bull, right? 
Well, now he shifts focus and now he starts questioning God. Starts questioning God. And again, I'm not going to be too hard on Job because I'm going to be honest with you. If I was in Job's shoes, I probably would, would be very, very similar, if not the same, right? Look at what he says, verse 17, talking to God. What is man that thou shouldest magnify him and that thou shouldest set thine heart upon him? You know what he starts out saying? It's like he's saying, what's the point? God, what's the point of, of you magnifying man? What's the point really of you setting your heart upon him if you allow this stuff to happen in his life? Right? We know, but, you know, again, Job's not understanding what's taking place here fully yet. Look at verse 18, that thou shouldest visit him every morning and try him every moment. How long wilt thou not depart from me, nor let me alone till I swallow down my spittle? I have See, I have sinned. I have sinned. Again, he's listening to Eliphaz, and again, he's listening to self, and he's coming to the conclusion, well, bless God, I've done something wrong. And most Christians are like that. When they experience a tragedy or travesty or some difficulty in life, the first thing they think is, I've sinned before God. I've done the wrong thing. You know what I mean? I'm a sinner. I'm in sin and all this sort of stuff. Was Job? No. No. You go back to one and two. All right. But now he's saying, well, I have sinned. What shall I do unto thee, O thou preserver of men? Why hast thou set me as a mark against thee, so that I am a burden to myself? And why dost thou not pardon my transgression and take away my iniquity? For now shall I sleep in the dust, and thou shalt seek me in the morning, but I shall not be. So the focus shifts, and he starts questioning God. All these things we must beware. The moment There's nothing wrong with asking the Lord questions. Everyone has questions, but, but this is questioning. This is, like, this is like holding God accountable. Remember, let me go, can we go to Job 33 again? Let's remind ourselves of that verse in Job 33 and verse number 12 and 11. He says this, Behold, in this thou art not just. I will answer thee that God is greater than man. Why dost thou strive against him? For he giveth not account of any of his matters. Right? So here's Job questioning. And sometimes, maybe even in your life, I know I have in my life, unfortunately, I have questioned, I've been questioning God about certain things and why is this not happening and why is this taking away? Well, listen, God does not have to give an account to me. God doesn't have to give an account to Job. God knows what he's doing. God's in control. God's in charge. Job doesn't understand that. And now he's saying, well, you know, what's the point, God? Why do you magnify man if you're, you know, basically, why do you magnify man if you're only going to tear him down? Why do you visit with us if you're going to treat us in such a way? And now he's going on about, well, you know, I've sinned. Why don't you forgive my transgression and my iniquity and all this sort of stuff? And he's questioning God. So you've got to beware, brethren. We've all got to beware that when we're going through experiences in life that we are not sure of, that that we be careful that we don't shut down and look inwardly and look for the self-help. We better, better be careful that we don't remove the filters and start just saying stuff. And we better be careful and beware that we don't shift focus and start questioning God. Beware the raging bull. It's not ended for Job. He now going to sit before Bildad. Bildad's going to speak up and then there's the, the others and so on. And this is going to go on. But I tell you what we do learn. We learn a lot about God and, and, and about who he is and what he's like through this whole book. It's a great book. And I'm sure God is going to give us some more devotions through this. But beware the raging bull. Don't run with the bulls. Fraser in Pap Pampelonia there in Spain. Look out, mate. You just be careful of the raging bull, all right? So we're to pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for your goodness and blessing to us. We love you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Help us to live it. Help us to apply it. Lord, we just pray that we we'll bring your glory and honor in our life today. And God, when we go through times where we don't understand the experiences that we are having, may, may you help us by your spirit. But also may we be careful that we don't start resorting to humanistic ideas and things that we shouldn't be doing. So God, we thank you for your help. Bless our day, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, God bless you. Thanks for joining this morning. I appreciate that. Look forward to being with you tomorrow morning, Friday again. Wow, the weeks are going quick, don't they? Christmas is here soon. So I look forward to being with you same time tomorrow morning. So until then, God bless and goodbye for now.